a competitive natural bodybuilder, I'm frequently met with one of two questions. Are you natural? And based on my answer, which is yes, why do you choose to stay natural? And for the second question, there are three main reasons for my decision. First, I tend to prefer the more natural look. Of course, there isn't really such thing as a natural look and an enhanced look, except for at the extremes. And certainly some natural guys can look enhanced and some enhanced guys can look natural. But those differences in the middle mostly come down to genetics, a topic for another video. But I've always been drawn to the more classic look of the pre-steroids era bodybuilders, or even the Olympia competitors of the 1970s. Guys like Frank Zane, who, while having admitted to using steroids themselves, still have a look that I think is achievable for genetically elite natural guys in the modern era with an optimized training program and diet. And while I have a strong interest in the sport of mainstream bodybuilding as a fan, it isn't really a look I'd want to emulate for myself. Second, doing it naturally simplifies things. Although steroids are often seen as a shortcut, and they certainly can be exactly that, with one case study following an internationally competitive elite-level bodybuilder showing a 16-pound increase in lean mass over one year, roughly 16 times the gains a natural at his level of advancement could realistically expect. But introducing it as a variable does complicate things. Without having to micromanage steroid dosages and cycles, I can focus all of my attention on the two basic factors completely within my control, my training and diet and optimize those to the best of my ability without having to worry about the additional complications steroids impose. The third reason is that I think it's healthier, and in this video I'm going to focus on this third reason. Despite compelling medical data and steroids disfavor, I'm personally of the opinion that provided one is aware of and accepts the risks associated with steroid use, it's ultimately a personal and legal decision on the behalf of the individual, one that can be made without any judgment on my part. And I think the only ethically relevant concern is if someone is dishonestly competing in drug-tested natural events or being intentionally deceptive about their use or lack of use to fans or followers. So with the political debriefing out of the way, let's dig into what the scientific literature has to say. I think it's important to start with basic terminology. In the literature, the term PEDs, or performance-enhancing drugs, is most frequently used with androgenic anabolic steroids like testosterone most frequently used class of PEDs amongst athletes and recreational bodybuilders, who are the most frequent users. And while testosterone is the most popular in this class, there's a laundry list of others that's just getting longer, but for the sake of the video, we're going to lump them all under the androgenic anabolic steroids umbrella. And it's worth noting that the effects of steroids can be tricky to research, since it's not exactly ethically advisable to pin study subjects with dosages high enough to represent what bodybuilders actually use. So while much of the data has emerged from lower quality research like case studies and retrospective surveys, animal studies are enlightening, and it seems to me the controlled trials that do exist are more likely to underrepresent rather than overrepresent the true risk associated with steroid use. A 2014 paper published in Endocrine Reviews sought to formulate a position statement for the Endocrine Society, and noted a fairly exhaustive list of potential maladies associated with steroid use, with cardiovascular effects making the top of the severity list, also citing, quote, well-recognized and probably seriously concerning evidence for testicular dysregulation, major mood disorders like mania and depression, and dependence. Cardiovascular complications seem to be the most broadly and commonly accepted concern, with a 2015 paper referencing 25 independent case studies, wherein athletes, mostly bodybuilders, aged 19 to 54, and using high-dose anabolic steroids, suffered a frightening mix of fatal and non-fatal cardiopathies, including heart attack, which is when blood supply is cut off to the heart itself, resulting in heart damage or failure, and stroke, which is when blood supply is cut off to the brain. And the authors note that unfavorable changes in blood lipid profile, namely a drop in HDL and spike in LDL cholesterol, can be noted just two months after the beginning of a steroid cycle. And long-term routine use can often lead to atherosclerosis, or a hardening and narrowing of arteries, which, if allowed to build up over enough time, can result in heart attack and heart failure. The water retention associated with anabolic steroid use has also been associated with high blood pressure, which, according to one study out of the University of Saarland in Germany, can persist for up to a year after discontinuation of drug use. Another common side effect of anabolic steroid use is left ventricular myocardial hypertrophy, which is basically a thickening of the main pumping chamber of the heart, and as a result, the heart loses some elasticity and can eventually fail to pump blood as forcefully as required, increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke. And this isn't just speculation or hearsay. In 2006, a German PhD dissertation examined autopsy data of 10 young bodybuilders with an average age of 33 years old who used combinations of anabolic steroids. In four cases, the cause of death was acute cardiac dysfunction, like heart failure, 
and in all 10 cases the average heart weight was 517 grams, significantly higher than normal heart weight, which according to the Journal of the American College of Cardiology is about 300 grams for a man, however can reach up to 500 grams with exercise through an increase in fiber size, but not fiber number. They cite 500 grams as a critical level past which further increases in mass are attributed to an increase in the number of fibers, a strong indication of cardiopathy. And while the cardiac implications may be the most lethal complication, a direct toxic impact on the liver is also well documented, especially in cases of chronic abuse of the orally administered 17-alpha alkylated steroids, or in other words, steroids that you take orally rather than through intramuscular injection, such as these. And liver adenomas, or benign tumors, have appeared as early as six months and as long as after 15 years of steroid abuse in cases from Sokas and colleagues, where two bodybuilders took five different steroids in high doses, including stenozolol and oxymethylone. Luckily, after stopping drug use, both tumors disappeared without surgical intervention. But not everyone is so lucky, as in two more recent cases investigating 29 and 39-year-old bodybuilders respectively, the tumors progressed to liver carcinomas. And at this stage, unless the abusers have a chance for surgery or transplant, death by liver coma is imminent. According to a 2008 review out of Harvard Medical School, evidence of persistent toxicity in other organ systems is modest, and there's not much evidence of an increased prostate cancer risk. However, because of apoptotic, or cellular death-causing effects on neural cells, the authors cite irreversible neuropsychiatric toxicity as a possibility. And while the whole roid rage concept was likely a bit of media overhype, many experimental and naturalistic field studies have shown that anabolic steroids can directly cause hypomania, a less severe form of mania, characterized by elevated mood, increased self-esteem, and decreased need for sleep, symptoms commonly exalted by users. However, manic episodes have been linked with aggression and violence in many of these studies. However, some studies don't report any mood changes at all, indicating that the psychological effects of steroid use are more individual. What appears to be more common is the onset of depression during withdrawal from steroid use, such as at the end of a cycle, perhaps in part due to the fact that body composition changes due to steroids fade away quite readily after discontinuation of use. Ending a cycle can also lead to other problems, namely hypogonadism, in other words, the body shuts down its natural testosterone while it's getting injected, resulting in testicular shrinkage and everything else associated with low testosterone, including reduced sperm count and infertility. This is often reversible within weeks or months, but not always, and the development of gynecomastia, or the growth of breast tissue as a result of testosterone to estrogen conversion, a side effect prevalent in 37% of steroid users according to a 2000 study, is generally not reversible, except for with surgery. The same study reported that 43% of users users experience acne, and 61% experience negative changes in libido, especially at the end of a cycle. While most of the data focused on male bodybuilders, it could be argued that the effects on females are even more severe and more permanent. In addition to the general health risks, women also experience a deepening of the voice, enlargement of the clitoris, decreased breast size, altered menstruation, and baldness. But it's important to note that we've been looking primarily at steroid abuse, and while I painted a fairly grim picture of its effects, individual response and outcome will of course be influenced by genetic factors, family history, and other substance abuse. And according to a review article titled Medical Issues Associated with Steroid Use, Are They Exaggerated? Authors Hoffman and Radimus conclude that, although clinical case studies continue to link anabolic steroid administration with myocardial infarct, suicide, and cancer, the evidence to support a cause and effect relationship is lacking. And it may be that other contributing factors, such as genetic predisposition and diet, play a substantial role and potentiate the harmful effects from anabolic steroids. And while, in my opinion, the conclusion of this article felt out of sync with the data presented, the practical takeaway that consistent physician monitoring is critical to the athlete who consumes anabolic steroids seems well advised. And of course, the data is open to the idea that testosterone has its share of benefits for men with low testosterone, including increased libido, bone density, muscle mass, mood, cognition, and quality of life. Of course, even supplementation under the guidance of a physician is not without the usual risks like liver toxicity, cardiovascular problems, and worsening sleep apnea. So this is a decision that should be made under a physician's counsel. In my Testosterone Science Explained video, I covered the most effective way to boost testosterone naturally, and I see an effort to maximize these basic principles as a viable first action to improving low testosterone. Because I got curious about where my own testosterone levels were while making the video, I decided to get a male hormone test from a diagnostics platform called Let's Get Checked. Basically, I collected a small sample of blood from home, sent it back to their lab using a prepackaged and prepaid envelope, and then a couple of days later, my results were available online, which in my case turned out to be in the normal range for testosterone. However, I think I do still have room to increase it naturally, and if you do have a low sex drive or low energy levels, 
um, or maybe like me, you just wanted to get it tested for the sake of optimizing testosterone for gains, then you can do so at letsgetchecked.com. The whole process was super simple and convenient, and I really like the fact that you could speak to a nurse at any time during the testing by phone call or text chat. So I've got all the information about that linked in the description box below if you guys would like to check it out. Thanks once again so much for watching. Uh, if you're new around here, please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. I've got a genetics science explained video on the way, so you can stay tuned for that. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.